Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Adam Hills. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of two of the world's most powerful men getting to know each other on a golf cart. <laughs> but what does BCSR stand for? Is it buggy contains stupid redneck? <laughs> Is it Bush chooses Scottish rent boy? <laughs> <laughs> Two very different yeah. toilets. <laughs> Is it Bush can't spell relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Is, it crazy? Is it blowjob cements special relationship? <laughs> Is, it, uh, Is it Bush coming, Scoob? Rikes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it brilliant chance, sniper required? <laughs> so the SR will be special relationship. SR will be special relationship, yes. Is it Brown continues special relationship? It is, of course. Well done. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Brown continues special relationship and refers to the new Prime Minister's visit to the United States this week where he reassured the White House that the UK's most important bilateral relationship would still be with America. Did you see the press conference? There was a really weird bit halfway through it when uh, one of the journalists said, what's the difference between Brown and Blair? And Bush said, aside from the toothpaste, and they both giggled at each other. <laughs> like they'd been, they'd been up all night having a midnight feast. <laughs> He also, really? very weirdly, at one point, like we didn't know, he just he looked at Gordon Brown and went, he's a Scotsman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah, then, we did know, though, didn't we? Okay. And then followed it with, but he's not the dour Scotsman, he's not the awkward Scotsman. Yeah, who's that guy? That's he's, uh... <laughs> he's the flying oh, Scotsman! <laughs> He said he was then he is the humorous Scotsman. Yeah. Which must have pissed Billy Connolly off a lot. <laughs> and Frankie. Frankie Boyle. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't Bush doesn't even know that that is bright. He thinks that Tony Blair's put on weight and had a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> when he did the little the little loop de loop on his little buggy, did anyone see that? It was horrific. Yeah. You know, one in three uh, people in Iraq need emergency aid, and he's like, I'ma do a loop de loop. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I bet all day he was just doing that. Uh, Gordon Brown was just kind of going, right, we've got to talk about Afghanistan. Pull my finger. Just stop. <laughs> stop showing off. He's walking behind the sofa. I'm going down a lift. We have to talk about <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> Let's the be brothers. Stop it. <laughs> Can you imagine any policy that the Americans would come up with that was stupid enough that Britain wouldn't go along with it? We go along with, oh, we're going to build a 10 mile high sex gun so the Earth can mate with the moon. <laughs> Sounds like a fantastic idea, yeah. George. Yeah. I think, I, you know, as an, as an outside observer, I think it's important that Britain has a relationship with America for this reason. That I watched Tony Blair over the last, you know, 12 months dealing with George W. Bush, kind of picking him up when he made mistakes at the G8 conference when, when Bush spoke, didn't realise his microphone was on and said, we've got to get Syria to stop Lebanon from doing this shit. And Blair stepped in. And then there was the press conference at the G8 summit where, where Bush kept trying to speak and Blair had to clarify what was being said, what he's trying to say. <laughs> he's, he was never his lapdog or his poodle. He was his carer. <laughs> <laughs> he was following Bush around the world like Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying, George, George, we need a UN resolution. Yeah, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> <laughs> that already Brown has spent too long with him because he's making up his own words. Or he was trying to say, I don't really like Americans, this is code. Because what he said was, I've always been an Atlanticist. Brilliant. What the hell is that? They're Spider-Man's enemies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep How much you confuse George Bush yeah. when you go, hello, I'm an Atlanticist. <laughs> exactly. yeah, like, oh, how do you breathe? <laughs> <laughs> For the entire weekend looking for Brown's gills. Uh, so. <laughs> Special relationship is quite a sort of creepy sexy phrase though, isn't it? Uh, it you like uh, a special relationship? To be honest, it is if you say it like that, Frank. <laughs> 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 Everything's quite creepy when you say it like that. Would you like a scone? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I'm particularly impressed by the way that you make, you put creepy and sexy together. It's kind of a creepy, sexy phrase. <laughs> I think of any phrase that touches both those buttons for me. Uh, <laughs> to they did get on very, very well, uh, apparently, or they claimed to get on very well in the nature of these things. Although Brown actually didn't mention Bush at any stage after Bush mm. made lots of he's a great, like did that whole he's not the door Scotsman he that you all write about which is such a, an mm. undermining thing to say it would have been when close. there's a world leader beside you and go hey this yeah. guy this guy's not an asshole hey. <laughs> they all think you're an asshole which is essentially what that was <laughs> Gordon Brown got into America okay but how might others soon struggle to get into the US uh, new laws whereby you have to register online before you even like, leave the country. Yes, like 48 hours in 48 advance. Hours you have to before you go to America, online. you have to go online and tell them where you're going, yep. uh, where you're staying, and why you're going there. Oh, because you know? they are. Look, uh, we've mentioned that on this show before. I have an artificial foot. We have mentioned an artificial foot. And in fact, last foot, time yeah. I was on the show, I talked about going through English security, airport security. American security has gotten better over the last couple of years because they're diligent and polite at the same time. So last time I went through LA, I went through the metal detector and it went off and, it, you know, beep, and the guy came over and I was expecting a rough set and he went, excuse me, sir, uh, do you have a prosthetic limb of any sort? And I went, um, yes. And he went, can I ask which limb it is? And I was kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, oh, I'm sorry, uh, could you walk over it? And he was so polite, could you put your foot up here, sir? So I got my foot up and he said, can, can you roll your jeans back? And I rolled them back and he said... Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I think you'll find that defines sexy and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's all sexy, I don't <laughs> The guy then said, he said, OK, can I touch your leg, sir? I almost asked that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is like show and tell every time yeah. you're on. I want to talk yeah. to you. <laughs> I seem to remember last time he was on, it was the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> then came out with this and said, Sir, I'm going to have to take a swab of the area where your prosthetic limb meets your actual leg to make sure there are no traces of explosives. I was like this close to going, oh, how do you think I lost it? <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I don't know if there is like a one legged community, but in the one legged community, <laughs> how has Heather McCartney, has she kind of spoiled things for you? Because, <laughs> yeah, because you want to go. I always thought, oh, I'd like anyone with one leg, why would I not? But now, I'd think twice. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for putting your leg away briefly. Who knows when it'll appear again? <laughs> In other politics news, why has a Lib Dem councillor from Devon hit the headlines? She's a, she's a liberal, liberal Democrat councillor, but she's also a sex worker, Dara. <laughs> she's not just a member of the <clears throat> Lib Dems, she's a Lib Dem councillor. Uh, for Bidwell, is it? Bidford. Yeah, Bidford. excuse me. This is her, yeah. That's her. her. Yeah. Yeah. You'd vote for that, wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> What's funny about it, aside from this, this is a traditional get up. She also does the following, uh, if I get this right, she does Miss Whiplash, that's rubbish. She just turns up and goes, oh, my back. <laughs> and the, uh, the other one is Miss Santa, that is entirely creepy, isn't it? Um, and the final one is Sexy Gypsy Lady. Which is just <laughs> hilarious, isn't it? Just the idea of someone in Devon going, Hello? Is that sexy gypsy lady? <laughs> I'm worried about... What do you think she plugs into these three sockets? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a chat line, though. Yeah. Right, apparently, £1.50 a minute you can call up. Now, if you ever call up your council, you never get through. How brilliant to know that you can definitely get through to one of your councillors, <laughs> you know, and you get a bit of sexy talk at the same time. <laughs> I'd like to know about my planning permission. Ooh, you haven't got planning permission, you bad boy. I'll spank you, <laughs> spank you. It's, it's actually more socially acceptable to be a sex worker than a Liberal Democrat. <laughs> And you know what, I've always thought the Devon accent to be the sexiest on a chat line. Yeah. I, the amount of times I've wanted to hear someone say, Oh, I'm not wearing any clothes, my lover. <laughs> <laughs> if only she would say that, though, you'll probably be trying to whack one off while she's telling you about proportional representation. <laughs> and I know from experience, that's a tough one. <laughs> Has anyone ever rang up a sex line? 
there any chances that we're going to, you know, now is the time to, you know, that I really want to share that? No, well, no, I haven't. Have well, you not, I did when I was 14, I got caught by my mum. Horrific. Um, <laughs> she, I know this voice. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to, to uh, yeah, get myself in trouble rather than my mum. Um, <laughs> I was 14 and I was getting bullied at school and rather than, oh, I don't know, learn karate, I used to ring up the sex line. I once had an argument one, with one lady who, uh, <laughs> I said, would you do this to me? And she said, not if, no, I won't, I need you to do this to me first. And uh, I plucked up the courage to go, you'll do it to me. And do you know why, madam? Because the customer is always right. <laughs> <laughs> Now we play a round called Stand Up, Stand Off to the Death. Not really. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this game involves Adam, Andy, Frankie and Jokes. If you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performers' stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner's a team with the best stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is television. Can I have a volunteer to... Oh, Joe. Uh, now, I... OK, I've got to start off by saying I'm not a prude, right, but have you seen some of the things that female newsreaders are dressed in? There was a woman the other night, right, she's got a very low-cut top, and she's doing a report on the Balkans. Suddenly, I'm like Sid James in a carry-on film. <laughs> I was sitting there going, oh, I can practically see your Balkans from here. <laughs> to turn over when she said she was going to show us downtown Basra. <laughs> and, and, oh, the one that gets me, Natasha Kaplinsky. How much makeup is that woman wearing? I'm surprised she can lift her head off the desk. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the day when it's, and today in Iraq. <laughs> going to jump off here. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is <laughs> Australia. I might have a go at that. All right. <laughs> Here comes Adam. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, you never see one Australian in a bar in the UK. It's always a group. Uh, uh, I don't know the collective term. Uh, a, a yobbo. Uh, <laughs> and we, we attract other Aussies to us. And it's like watching a Geiger counter measure radioactivity. Because you see Australians meeting people in pubs just going... We meet another Australian go, <laughs> In fact, I found out that Steve Irwin had passed away last year whilst in an Irish pub. I was on holidays. I hadn't read the news. I didn't know what was happening. And people come and go, excuse me, are you Australian? I was going, um, yes, I am. We're sorry to hear about your man. <laughs> I, I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't want to be rude. So I kind of went, oh, thanks very much. Still, at least he died doing what he loved. <laughs> And I thought, oh, my God, Shane Warne died sending a text message. <laughs> my favourite was being in England. I was in England when the funeral took place. That was the weirdest thing, because English people... There was one phrase that popped up in the news and was quoted to me in conversation by an English friend. He went, it's amazing watching all of Australia come out for Steve Irwin, isn't it? <laughs> it's like what they said on the news. So what's that? He was Australia's Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? How? What, did the Queen pay the Stingray to do it? <laughs> Very good, Adam Hill. Well done. <laughs> Frankie and Andy, what are you going to get? Let's spin the wheel again. OK, the next topic is the Royals. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, uh, the tour where Prince Charles went to India with Camilla. That's your like, proper rural India as well. You know that half the people that saw them were going, Diana's let herself go. <laughs> Apparently, they, uh, they couldn't send Prince Harry to Iraq because they couldn't afford the resources required to start developing Factor 60,000 sunblock. <laughs> Poor old Harry had his uniform packed. It was a 1941 SS Stormtrooper. <laughs> in, in many ways, Harry's just a typical British squaddy, isn't he? In that he has absolutely no idea who his real father is. Thank <laughs> 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 
Andy, let's see what you've been left with. <laughs> let's spin the wheel. It's Osama bin Laden. Now, apparently, right, if you translate Osama bin Laden from Arabic, it's not, in fact, Osama. It is, in fact, Usama. Is it any wonder we can't actually find him? <laughs> We're looking for the wrong bloke. We've got American and British soldiers wandering round Afghanistan. Have you seen Osama? No. Have you seen Usama? <laughs> yes! He's in the bloody cave next door. <laughs> They're now worried more, apparently, about ricing. Apparently, though, we should be OK. We should be able to spot it, cos it smells of almonds. So you can see that one going tits up, can't you? <laughs> close the station, close... It. Oh, no, sorry, false alarm. Bakewell tart and a macaroon. <laughs> Andy Parson! <laughs> and the point there goes to Adam O'Fraggy! <laughs> the next round <laughs> is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Adam, which category would you like? Uh, technology, please, Dara. OK, your category is technology. The answer is 8.6 million a day. What is the question? How much does a high street bank charge for being ten pounds overdrawn on your account? <laughs> is it simply is it simply how many things happen? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many free minutes would it take for me to sign up with T Mobile again? <laughs> Is it the amount of paedophiles that the Daily Mail say are released from prison every day? <laughs> is, it, is it how much money is being lost by the Mormon musical 200 Brides for Seven Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> is it five fruit and veg a day are supposed to be good for you? What would be bad for you? <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a clue. Uh, it's, it's an online phenomenon. It's, it's Facebook, isn't it? It's how many, is it how many hits Facebook gets? It's not how many or? hits Facebook gets. It's how many uh, photos are uploaded on Facebook. Wow, very good. The question I was looking for is... <laughs> how many photographs are being uploaded onto internet phenomenon Facebook? The country's increasing obsession with the American-founded social networking website Facebook. The UK now has 4 million users and London has more Facebookers that's actually the term, uh, than any other city in the world. However, for all its popularity, the site is being banned by increasing numbers of employers and is said to be an easy target for snoopers and identity thieves. I'm so happy to have used the word snoopers. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> it. As if there's a major new crime wave of snoopers going... Well, you need to be a snooper, my friend. Well, it's basically, it tells you when the relationship of one of your friends has actually changed. Do you know? And you've got certain friends whose relationship seems to change about three times a week. Whose status changes every day? I wake up a miserable bastard and I go to med. Bed is a miserable <laughs> bastard. I'm not constantly changing from giggly to cautious. These <laughs> 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 oh, oh, things. Does that. nobody get laid anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Does nobody act, actually just meet people and? and Shag them? <laughs> I, I think a constant yeah. mountain of data and strangers. <laughs> but presume they do, but they do within reach of a computer so that they can actually update their status <laughs> midway through the act. <laughs> Dara is surging, surging. <laughs> Dara is spent. Do <laughs> you think you the Liberal get... Democrats in Biddeford have got a site called Sit on My Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's unlikely, isn't it? It is, yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of young people generally and their pursuits, what other issue has been in the news this week for oh, young is people? Is the whole thing of them drinking too much? They do, apparently. Yeah. The young people of Britain are drinking See, I don't, too I much. I don't understand really. this. You know, it's like young people have always drunk... You know, they talk about, like, binge drinking. You think, well, isn't binge drinking what we used to call drinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are binging over two or three days. Didn't that used to be the weekend? <laughs> It, it, is, you do, it is a national trait. We don't do this in Ireland at all. We don't talk down the young generation in the way that they do. It is, it's hilarious that any generation can give out about the young people. Look at them with their happy slapping. It wasn't like that in my day when we had football violence up and down the country yeah. every Saturday. <laughs> or in your grandfather's when he went down to Brighton with the rest of the mods and beat up some rockers because he didn't like their duck's arse haircut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Every generation yeah. here is yeah. pregnant. Yeah, and they say that, like, the worst teenagers in Europe ever. You think, really? I think the Hitler <laughs> Youth were <laughs> <Yeah>. maybe worse. <laughs> really. No, they, they delivered a pope. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> did. Uh, uh, no, yeah. I, I don't know why we don't just address the whole problem with teenagers seriously and take the, the obvious solution of having more guest appearances by philosophers in Hollyoaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a new pizza parlour opened in the, the promenade. <laughs> <laughs> yes, who's the owner? Why, it's Milan Kundera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I enjoy the olives and salami, but I'm overwhelmed by a sense of almost pointlessness. Well, it's better than the usual excuse, always like, bring back the cane, national service and all that. The last thing you need when your hormones are all over the shop is a gun. <laughs> yeah. The National Service was one that, and it didn't actually teach you anything, it just took you out of circulation during the particularly difficult years. Yeah, exactly. like, you might as well just imprison all 19 year old men and then just let them out and go, listen, we just didn't want you around for a while now. <laughs> now go back to your homes and families. You, think they should, if they, you know, I think they should bring back National Service, but for old people, because they are the people that want it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take bears, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed like, they're, they're saying, oh, we, we've got the, the highest pregnancy rate in Europe. And I noticed the, the clear blue pregnancy test, they've changed it now. It used to be, if it went blue, then you knew you were pregnant. Apparently, that was too tricky for some of our kids, right? <laughs> it now says pregnant or not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Going, oh, it's blue. What does that mean? Oh, I might give birth to a Smurf. You know. <laughs> we shouldn't. We shouldn't obviously bother with multicolored condoms. What we need is writing on the condom. You know, outside, inside, in here. That's what we really need. I always thought it'd be good if pregnancy tests had a, a joke on them, like a lollipop stick. <laughs> <laughs> It's not yours. Smiley, okay. <laughs> no, no, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have the start of the joke just written on the other one, and then, yeah. if you're pregnant, you got the punchline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when is a door not a door? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing this is how it's done. <laughs> when is a jar? Oh, God, I'm pregnant. Uh, <laughs> My wife. People would be getting pregnant just to find out what the bloody punchline was. <laughs> My wife has kept, for, the, for both our kids, my wife has kept the pregnancy testing kit that told her she was pregnant. So in a cupboard, there is a blue thing covered in my wife's urine. <laughs> That's going to surprise the burglars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of umbilical cord. My <laughs> mum's got my right foot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell Joe and Andy! <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, a bloody royal visit. Uh, have you seen the bar? Is there a bar? <laughs> oh, the bar, it's in here, is it? Oh, <laughs> Just do here, yeah, splendid. You do with the gin. What are you, uh, what are you cooking? Yes. <laughs> I uh, tell you what I like to eat. Uh, swan, love the swan. <laughs> Golden eagle, I shoot some of them in uh, Balmoral. Mind you, I tell you what you need for that is a, a shotgun. Yes, <laughs> yes, a bloody big one. <laughs> do, uh, I say, do you, uh, <laughs> can I just say, you really do have a terrific pair of norks. <laughs> they are. My goodness. Yes. Good. I'm so, sorry to mention them again. But they are magnificent. Do you... Uh, are they your own, or...? You, uh, what's this? Oh, chicken, is it? Oh, lovely, yes. I play this at Sandringham. Uh, uh, level five. I, uh, I tell you what you have to do. Kick them! Kick them! That's what you have to do. Oh, dear. No, you've... You've balls that up. Oh, no. oh look out. It's the fuzz. Yes. I didn't know... I didn't know it was an osprey. I... I <laughs> sort of, are you, uh, Are you a stripper game, or...? or <laughs> I, I... I tell you what I saw earlier. There's a woman in the kitchen <laughs> who has a terrific pair of norks. <laughs> so, oh, look, lovely, a DVD, yes. Yes, my favourite. Normally, I have to go to Holland to buy these. <laughs> well, goodbye, goodbye. Do you want some? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, well, goodbye. Good... No, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> Point out for you! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely lines to hear on a science programme. After working on the equation for 30 years, Professor Stevens made an incredible discovery. His wife had left him and he'd wasted his life. <laughs> <laughs> the trade in human organs is shocking. This kidney cost me nearly a tenner. <laughs> Today, we're going to be making a bomb using japati flour and hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> Which is faster, a dog or a crossbow bolt? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how God created the world in seven days. <laughs> I escaped from a petri dish! <laughs> Hello, my name's Jade Goody. <laughs> And that is how we can prove that aluminium is gay. <laughs> <laughs> a cure for acute depression may be just around the corner. Oh, here it is. A train. <laughs> and as the mighty lion shakes the life out of this tiny gazelle, I feel strangely horny. <laughs> That test was conclusive. Cats have one life. <laughs> 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 OK, next up it is... <laughs> Questions omitted from the British citizenship test. <laughs> Can you fly a plane? <laughs> Can you land a plane? <laughs> Pat Butcher, shag or die? <laughs> Do you ever look at the ingredients on Ready Steady Cook and think, <laughs> I could make a bomb out of that? <laughs> Is there any chance you could represent us in the 2012 Olympics? <laughs> in which case, you're in. <laughs> Boris Johnson, true or false? <laughs> Do you like the music <laughs> of Shawadi Wadi? <laughs> On this map of Britain, can you point to where Gloucester used to be? <laughs> Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Adam Hills. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you next week. Good night. So, coming next on BBC Two, York is in big trouble in the bubble. Hyperdrive is on the way. Then Jack and Victor feel some long-forgotten urges. It's still game at ten.